Happy Tuesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to answer a question for you today. A lot of people ask this question. What are demons? What are they? Are they real? Are they something we need to be afraid of? Are they something we need to watch out for? What do they do? A lot of people ask that question. What are these things? Did Jesus ever encounter demons? All these are questions that people want to know. I'm going to answer some of these questions for you today. You need to know about these things. Amen. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything works out for me. Everything works out for me. I lost my pilot's license. So Sunday morning in church, I said, I'll find it. I got it. I got the number. That's all I needed was the number. I got it. I didn't know what the number was. I have no idea where that pilot's license is. But I, but everything, I, I, all I said was, everything works out for me. And you know what? It does. And it did. Because it always does. Huh? Somebody lost their keys. I said, you'll find those keys. Somebody lost their wallet. I said, you'll find that wallet. They found their wallet, found their keys. You know what I said? I told you so. I told you so. Don't doubt me. When I say something, through the power in the name of Jesus, it's going to happen. And why? Because Jesus said so. If you say it and believe it, it will happen, he said. Read Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Brother Hagin preached on that verse for 65 years. That in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, those two verses. Somebody said to him one time, he said, Brother Hagin, what are you going to teach about in Winter Bible Seminar? He said, whoa, probably Mark 11, 23, 24. So why don't you teach on something else? You've been teaching on that for so long. He looked at it and he said, well, when you get that, we'll move on. I don't think I got it yet. I've been talking about it for a long decades. I don't know that I got it yet. I'm working on it. Amen. I'm working on it. That's all I can tell you is I'm working on it. That's a whole Bible. I don't know if I get how much of that I get. You know, I get, I know a little bit. I don't know everything there is to know, but I do know a little bit. Amen. I know about these demons. Share this video with everybody you know. Share it with people in your uh, Facebook page. Uh, all your friends on Facebook, just put it on your page. That way a lot of people will see it. Tag them. You know how to do that. The people in your contact list, text them. And tell them, go to YouTube and type in Pastor Jim Kibler. They'll see these videos. Glory to God. Also, make sure you call me today if you need prayer. And make real sure you call me when you do your offerings and donations. Because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you that God told us to speak. What are demons? Comes out of this book. Jesus, we've been giving this book away. Amen. If you did offerings this weekend and didn't uh, text me your name and number to get this book, make sure you do. The word demon is not used in the Bible. A lot of people are even surprised about that. But it means devil. It means devil or evil spirits. Jesus referred to them as devils. 
devils. People think, well, they're little devils. I don't know how big they are. I know some of them are pretty small. Some of them are real tiny, real tiny. But I will tell you one thing about demons. They are all subject to the name of Jesus. Amen. All of them. When somebody uses that name in great faith, makes a difference. Demons are disembodied spirits of some kind. The truth of the matter is, we don't know where they came from. Nobody knows. People will tell you, but believe me, folks, they don't know. They don't know. And the reason they don't know is because the Bible doesn't tell us. You know, if the Bible doesn't tell us something, then I assume I don't know. I just, I tell people, I don't know. Because if it's not in the Bible, I don't know. And they're, but they're, they're, they're disembodied spirits of some kind. Now, the thing about evil spirits and about all spirits, as far as I know, they never die. They never die. Your spirit inside you will never die. That's why I say, I say to people, people, nobody ever dies. Nobody ever dies. Their bodies die. Their bodies die. But they don't die. The minute that, did, if you've ever seen that movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, when he was killed on the street, somebody shot him, his spirit came up out. They call it his ghost. His ghost came up out of his body. Now, his spirit has become disembodied. It has become disembodied. And that's what happens when everybody dies. You see somebody laying there that's, that's dying. Their spirit is about to come out of their body. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. In other words, his body gave up the ghost and his spirit came out of his body when he died. And his spirit went down into hell. <clears throat> what happened down there, we don't know for sure. People speculate about that too. But we do know he came out of there and back into his body. He rose from the dead. Amen. As far as I know, he's the only one who's ever done that. Now, there's been people raised from the dead, but they weren't dead three days. They weren't dead three days. But demons are disembodied spirits of some kind. What kind, we're not sure of. How long they've been on this earth, we're not sure of. One thing we are sure of, those things are evil. They are evil and they work for Satan. They work for Satan. He's the boss of all them things. There's a lot of theories. One time, at one time, demons had to have been living in a body. They had to have been living in a body. Because a, a spirit at one time has to have a body. So demons want bodies. They need bodies to express themselves. Your house is not haunted. Demons cannot express themselves apart from a body of some kind. Now we know they can go into animals. Because the demons that were in that man, called Legion, asked Jesus if they could go into the pigs. They went into the pigs, ran down the hill, and into the water, and all drowned. So they, they need to be in a body. They need to express themselves in a body. Otherwise, they are disembodied. And Jesus said they walk around on dry ground. 
In other words, they're just floating around. They're floating around. They don't have any assignment. It seems to be that demons need to be oppressing or uh, possessing a person or an animal in order to express themselves. In order to express themselves. They are evil and do the work of Satan who seems to be their leader. Seems to be their leader. Seems to be their leader. All demons, no matter what type they are, must obey commands made in the name of Jesus. A person who is in thought, who, or, or a, or they have to obey a person who is in a position of authority who uses the name of Jesus in faith. Now, there are people who can command these demons to do things. I'm one of them. Because I have that kind of faith in the name of Jesus that I can do that. They cause all kinds of problems. Now, one thing you need to understand about a demon is it will never willingly leave a person. Now, before you get too excited or nervous or scared, Christians cannot be possessed. If you are a born-again Christian, demons cannot possess you. A person who is possessed is somebody who is totally controlled by a demon. This is where you find, where you find this is in the insane asylums, in the mental health places. Some of these people really are possessed. They can be delivered a lot of different ways. A lot of different, read, read the book, Curses, and read the book, Jesus. They can be delivered a lot of ways. But these demons, these demons cannot possess because they can oppress people. They cause sickness, they cause poverty, but they cannot possess you because in order to possess a person, they have to get into their spirit. And they cannot get into the spirit of a Christian because a Christian has the spirit of God inside them. And the demon won't even approach that. So you cannot be possessed. Amen? But you can be oppressed. You can be oppressed. There's a whole big difference there. Once a demon has got access to the life of anyone, by any means, he will stay there until that person dies or he is cast out in the name of Jesus. Huh? Is this good? What we do is we get rid of them. Now, before we end this today, I want you to know that demons can only operate in the lives of a person with permission. And curses give them permission. When I break the curse of the law in the lives of people, every demon operating in that person's life will leave. Because the curse gives them permission. If they don't have permission, they will leave. They can only operate under authority and permission. Once I break that curse in your life, the curse leaves and takes all the demons with it. Curses give demons permission to operate. Once that curse is broken, the demons no longer have permission. Demons of sickness, demons of poverty, they will all leave. That's why people increase. We'll continue this tomorrow. Amen? Because I want you to understand about these things. Call me today. You know, if you think you got curses and demons operating in your life, not possessing, but causing problems and oppressing you and blocking the blessing, call me. Let me get rid of them for you. And that's what I do. I get rid of them for you. Share this video with everybody you know. I am determined you are going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I will make it happen for you.